discuss about the subject a design of RCC and steel structures in module A2 that is plate girders. Myself, Dr. Navin GM, head of the research center, civil engineering department, government engineering college, Chamradnagara. In this plate girder, in your previous class, we discussed about how the plate girder will be designed and also what are the steps involving for designing a plate girder, what are the necessity checks we required for this plate girder will be discussed in your previous session. Today we discuss about how to design a plate girder. In that plate girder there is three types of plate girder will be designed normally and that first one is building for building the plate girder will be comes then highway then coming to the railway. These are the three mainly required a plate girder. In that mainly depending upon the depth to thickness ratio the length will be depends on this plate girder using highway and also building and, all, and railway can be used this plate girder. In this concert let us uh, discuss the problem in a plate girder. In that plate girder shows in a figure 1 that is uh, length of a beam and load arrangement will be shown in a figure in a slide is fully restrained against the lateral buckling throughout its span that is buckling the against the lateral laterally the span is given here 20 meter and carries two concentrated load as shown in a figure in next slide the design a plate girder it gives we are intention to find out uh, design a plate girder then yield stress of a steel is given that is fy that is 250 newton per mm square then material factor for steel nu m is 1.15 then dead load factor that is nu fd is equal to 1.35 this is the factor of safety dead load imposed load factor is nu f lambda this is 1.5 these are the some factor of safety in your concrete structure generally you taken 1.5 but in steel section for material different for dead load different for lie load different factor will be comes this will be discussed in the next slide how this multiplying with the working load this figure shows this the span of 20 meter this is the example of uh, plate girder in that 20 meter span in that 10 meter uh, 10 meter that is 10,000 mm this is 500 uh, 5,000 mm that is 5 meter this is 5 meter this is w1 w2 this is w that is uniformly distributed load will be carrying then what is the value of w what is the w of w1 what is the w2 that given in a next slide uh, this figure shows the plate girder with the intermediate stiffener. You see this stiffeners with the length of flange. Then solution of load. You see this one. Loading will be uniformly distributed. 20. Concentrated load W1D that is 200. This is concentrated load W2D that is 200 kilo newton. This figure shows W1 is equal to 200, W2 is equal to 200, W is equal to that is 20 kilo newton per meter. This is very another thing is there including self weight is given. Self weight of your structure this carries a UDL of 20 kilo newton per meter. Suppose is excluding self weight mean if you are calculating self weight by w by 200 that will be discussed in your introduction part that is how calculation of 
this uh, self weight means w by 200 but here no need to calculate this uh, self weight of your girder is given including self weight of your girder gives the 20 kilo newton per meter then coming to the lie load distribution that is uh, lambda w lambda is equal to 35 kilo newton meter then concentrated load w1 lambda 400 kilo newton concentrated load w2 lambda that is 400 kilo newton then this is the factor load that is you are multiplying this load that is 20 that is uniformly distributed load with a factor of material where w1 is equal to wd wd gamma fd plus w uh, lambda nu f lambda this is how similarly for w1 to w2 w1 w2 this is for factor load this multiplying by 20 this is factor load this is udl for this one lambda for various load this will be the live load this is self weight uh, that is a dead load this is for factor load okay this is multiplied by 1.5 1.5 directly for imposed load but this 1.35 will be for self weight this 1.25 that is dead load factor will be as to 1.35 but imposed load is 1.5 this is multiplied in this respective loads we are getting w1 is equal to uniformly distributed load w is equal to what is that one w dash is equal to 79.5 similarly for dead load at concentrated one that is 870 kilo newton similarly for w dash to on that case 870 870 is come for this two factor this is concentrated load coming to the next slide that is bending moment and shear force calculation of bending moment and shear force in this introduction part what is the pattern of plate girder bending moment variation and shear force variation will be discussed in your introduction part itself in udl that is it given that is wl square by 8 that is for udl this is the relation w dash is how much we are getting here 79.5 this is substitute here 79.5 into what is the length of guider 2020 divided by 8 gives this value 3975 as a what is the unit of this bending moment kilo newton meter then similarly for udl effect what is the shear force w1 l divided by 2 that is how much this one 79.79.5 point, 79 into 20 divided by 2 gives 795 kilo newton this unit is kilo newton then coming to the concentrate load effect that is the passion of this concentrate load effect is wl by 4 okay the pattern of bending moment is like this for concentrated load what is this value wl by 4 okay in that wl by 4 this is 4350 this is concentrated load w is equal to how much here it's 70 okay 870 into 20 divided by 4 gives 4380 here the shear force is w that is w is equal to 870 the shear force is w by 2 w by 2 and that constant two point load is there therefore w is equal to 870 for concentrated load this is for bending moment this is for shear force the total summation of UDL effect and concentrated load effect, the summation of these two gives 8325. This is bending moment. Maximum bending moment are both concentrated load and 
UDL effect. Then coming to this 795 plus 870 gives 1665. The total shear force, net shear force acting on a beam is 1665. Therefore, the design shear force and bending moment as shown in a figure 2 in next slide. What is this? This is the pattern of we are providing this is the concentrated load W. This is the concentrated load W. Similarly, for length, what is the length of 20 meter that is 20,000 mm. This is 5,000 mm, 5,000 mm. Then this is your shear force 1665. How this 1665 comes? 1665 minus 870 gives this value. Then 870 to calculating of shear force at this point. Similarly, 1665 here. Okay, 1665 total shear force at a reaction. Then 870 gives similar. Same pattern of load will be comes variation of shear force. Then what is the pattern of UDL? That is parabola. This parabola at the center, what is the value? 8325. This is the WL square by 8 it gives the 8325. But normally this combination for point load and also UDL, this is the passion of bending moment that is UDL. The bending moment in kilonewton, shear force in kilonewton meter. The shear force is in kilonewton, bending moment in shear, uh, kilonewton meter. This is the bending moment and shear force diagram. Then coming to the initial sizing of plate girder. Normally, how the plate girder size will be fixed depending upon your L by D ratio. How this L by D ratio will be fixing uh, depending upon what type of span will be taken that is for building, for highway and railway difference will be different. That is L by D ratio will be different. And that the depth of plate guider is fixed. The recommendation of span by depth ratio for simply supported guider varies between for 12 for shorter span and 20 for a longer span guider. This is how we are limiting 12 and 20. Okay. We go for your introduction part and see that. In that uh, 12 is the minimum, maximum is 25 is there. But we are kept 12 is for short, 24 long span. Therefore, in between this, your L by D ratio is fixed for a panel sizing of plate girder. Then L by D, what is L? 20 meter, that is 20,000 divided by D is equal to 40, that is 40, that is 1400, that is uh, depth of your the web total. Then we are getting that is 14.8. This 14.8 is lies between 12 to 20. 12 to 20, the depth of 1400, we can provide 1400 is acceptable. We are Providing depth here, assuming 1400, this ratio comes 12 to 20. Okay, this will acceptable. 1400 is acceptable. Why? Because 12 to 20 is coming. Your ratio. We can use different ratio in between this, this in between 12 to 20. We can use that is 1500, 1600 also. We go for larger span means. For shorter span, we require lesser 1200, 1300. We go for shorter span. But here 20 meters a larger span, therefore, we are providing 1400 mm depth. We are getting the ratio 14.8. Then coming to the flange. This is flange that is. Uh, this uh, plastic, yield plastic will be calculated by using 
f y divided by 1.15. What is 1.15 is the material partial safety factor. Okay, and that given in a first given in a problem. You see this, uh, you see this one 1.15. In that two, uh, 250 is the Fy that is uh, yield stress of your steel that is 217.4 Newton per mm square we are getting Py that is less than 250. Then single flange area you calculate first single flange area that is M that is uh, 194.9 through in 10 raise to 6 divided by what is the depth we fixing 1400. F y is equal to 240.4. Okay. From this, we can calculate it. We are getting 64010.7 mm square. That is single plunge area is coming 64010.7 mm. Then by thumb rule, we can assume the flange width as 0 0.3 times the depth of the section. What is the depth of the section? And that uh, 0.3 times we can assume. It. What is the depth uh, normally? 1400 into 0.3. That is normally how much we will be getting? That is we are try the section. Okay. 0.3 into 140. That is the assumption we can make. You can more will be Assuming, okay, uh, no problem. In that 0 0.3 into 140 means how much we are getting? 420. We are trying 420. Here we are coming 420. Okay, 420. Try 420 into 66 mm. Given an area. How much this area? That is here. How much we are getting? How much this area is coming? 4. 20 into 66 mm gives an area this much 27720 mm square. This is how we are fixing the flange width and depth. We are trying here 420 into 66 mm. We can try for greater value, not lesser than this value. Okay, not lesser than this value. We can try for 450. Okay, 450 into 66 mm like that. We can. Uh, Try in our problem. Then fixing of web, the minimum web thickness for plate guider in building. Normally, we are the ratio of L by D ratio is more in building. Therefore, here we design for a building. Where is between 10 to 20 mm? 10 to 20 mm. The thickness is assumed as here. My problem we have taken 40. 14 mm. Okay. Then what is the de uh, depth? We are getting 1400. Here 40, 14 mm will be web size. Okay. In that ends, the web size is fixed 1400 into 40 mm. Then section modular, uh, section classification. How? The section will be classification in that flange for flange and web. These are the two parts comes in a section classification in your plate guider. In this flange means epsilon is equal to 250 by fx to the power of 1 by 2. That is 250 that is what is fy that is 250 that is 1 by 2 is equal to 1. Okay. Epsilon is equal to 1 year. Then B is equal to breadth is equal to B, capital B. What is how much we are trying? 420 year. We are taking 420 year. Therefore, 420 minus thickness of web is 14 divided by 2 gives 193. Okay, this is uh, B is equal to 193. Epsilon is equal to 1. B by T is equal to this B by T is equal to. 193.3 divided by 60 thickness of 60 gives 2.92. This is smaller than 
seven point nine into epsilon is one. Seven point nine itself, therefore, lesser than this. Okay, the flange is okay. Such okay in the classification of section, this will be criteria is okay. Then as flange is plastic section, we can take as a plastic section. Suppose nine point three means this is compact section, but here we are taken a plan section seven point nine. Then web section D by T that is thousand four hundred by forty gives hundred is greater than sixty six point two epsilon. Epsilon is equal to one. Therefore, hundred is greater than sixty six point two. That is sixty six point two into one gives sixty six point two only. Therefore, sixty six point two is smaller than hundred. Hence, the web is checked for shear buckling. We require checking a shear buckling. Okay, the this uh, web is checked for shear buckling. Then check. What are the checks we required? In that check for serviceability. Okay, we are checked for serviceability. That is D by two fifty. What is D? Thousand four hundred divided by two fifty. That is five point six mm. Okay, thousand four hundred into two fifty. That is five point six mm. Smaller than T. What is T? Fourteen mm. Okay, and that case smaller than T. Therefore, since T is greater than D by two fifty, web is adequate for serviceability. Okay, we are getting more. Means serviceability. Then we require check for shear. Usually tension field method. We require tension field method. Why? Because this check is required. Shear buckling is required. Why? Because under it is greater than sixty six point two epsilon. Then coming to the area of flange. That is how to calculate area of flange. That is uh, capital D F into P F that is four twenty into sixty sixty six. Our this area two seven seven two zero mm square twenty seven thousand seven twenty mm square. Then in the tension field method, nominal shear resistance that is V N should be obtained from the formula or relation. This this is there in your I S eight hundred two thousand seven code book in. Page number fifty nine to seventy. We can check this type of relations are there. How to calculate the nominal shear, pure pure shear, and how to calculate a moment like that. In coming in coming slides, we are using from page number fifty nine to page number seventy seven zero. The various relations are there in your code book IS eight hundred two thousand seven. We are using this. This is the. This is how we are obtaining nominal shear by this relationship. What is this? Vp pure shear is smaller than or equal to Vn, where tau b is equal to buckling strength. We are calculating a buckling strength tau b. The various conditions are there. This tau b is lesser than 0.8 like that. The lambda value should be greater than like that. We can see that code book. We are getting this tau b value. Then F is equal to yield strength of the tension field. Then W D is equal to width of the tension field. Okay, these are the various factor involving to calculate the V N. That is next K V. K V is equal to we are using tension field method. Uh, tension field method. Therefore, K V is equal to taken as Five point three five plus four divided by C by D whole square. In that we substituting five point six three five plus four. Spacing of stiffener will be taken as one six six seven. This is one thousand four hundred. Is the depth of your web? Okay. Then K V value is equal to eleven point zero two. That is the eleven point zero two. The mu value should comes point three. 
okay the mu value should be 0.3 we are getting this relation by substituting this values the kv value and mu value then the elastic critical shear stress in the web that is tau cr that is tau cr is equal to what is the relation kv into y square into e divided by 12 of 1 minus mu square of d divided by tau v whole square okay this is the relation you substitute this kv value where we are getting kv value 11.02 we are substituting 11.02 pi square into 2 e is equal to modulus of elasticity of steel for all grade of steel this is constant 2 into 10 raised to pi then 12 of 1 minus mu value is taken here 0.33 that is square of d by tw that is thickness of web then 1400 means depth of web we substituting this value we substituting this value we are getting this 199.19 newton per mm square we are getting newton per mm square on that case non dimensional web slender ratio for shear buckling stress that is lambda w how to calculate the web slender ratio that is lambda w means that is this is the relation for using tension field method that is lambda w is equal to f y divided by root of 3 tau cr that is tau cr what is getting 199.19 and substituting Fy and tau C value as 199.19 is equal to 0.85. It is smaller than 1.25. It is smaller than lambda W is smaller than 1.25. Then shear stress compounding corresponding to web buckling stress that is tau B. The tau B value will be calculating by using this relations that is 1 minus 0.8 of lambda w minus 0.8 whole into fy divided by root 3. In that concert, we are substituting lambda w as 0.85, that is uh, lambda is equal to this value, then 250 divided by root 3. We are getting, this is w tau b is equal to 120. Tau B value is shear, stress corresponding to web buckling is tau B, that is 120 is coming. Then inclination of the tension field, that is how the psi value will be calculated in your uh, introduction part itself, where no, that is psi is equal to tan inverse of D by C. Okay. Psi is equal to tan inverse of D is equal to 1400 divided by 1667 that is spacing of stiffener you substituting this value we are getting 40.02 okay that is the psi value that is 40.02 then reduced plastic moment of the respective flange plate that is capital mfr that is critical moment critical moment in a flange m f r is equal to this is the relation okay this is the relation in what uh, in this what are the known and unknown b p w is known uh, b f is known d f is known y f is known okay these are this this is known this is known only this n f this n f and gamma naught is known is given in our problem 1.1 a new uh, factor of safety for this value that is 1.1 <coughs> then nf this nf will be taken as 6000 from that we substituting mfr we can get you substituting all the values okay what is the known 0.25 is the constant that is 420 that is 66 into 250 of 1 minus the 6000 in 10 raised to 3 divided by 
फोर ट्वेंटी इंटू सिक्सटी सिक्स इंटू टू फिफ्टी इंटू वन पॉइंट वन ऑफ वोल स्क्वायर गिवस द वैल्यू ऑफ वन वन फोर थ्री फोर किलो न्यूटन दिस मूवमेंट इज ग्रेटर देन वाट वी आर गेटिंग इन मैक्सिम बेंडिंग मूवमेंट ओके दिस एम एफ आर इज ग्रेटर देन वाट वी आर एक्चुअली वी आर गेटिंग बेंडिंग मूवमेंट इन यूर प्रॉब्लम दिस इज द मैक्सिम बेंडिंग मूवमेंट वी आर गेटिंग बट दट विल बी ग्रेटर देन दिस इज द फाइनल वी आर गेटिंग by substitute we are getting this value should be this value is greater than this 8325 kilo newton meter hence this section is okay okay this section is okay this is how the moment is resistance but the necessity is check is required to solve the shear Critical is shear here. S is equal to anchorage length of tension plate along the compression and tension plane respectively, obtained from a relation S is equal to two divided by sine psi of m f r divided by f y t w whole to the power of point five. Is smaller than or equal to C value. This is the relation. Yes, is the anchorage length of tension plate is required. Then S is equal to you substitute all the known value. That is, I value is forty point zero two. Then M F R value will be one one four three four into ten raised to three, and F Y value is two fifty. T W value is fourteen. We can get this is one seventy seven point seven six. Okay, the the C value is greater than S value. That is one seventy seven point seven six. The spacing is what are we providing one six six seven. But we are getting one seven seven point seven six. Therefore, the anchorage length is sufficient. Width of the tension plate. Oh. The width of the tension period field will be calculated in that using this relation. How the tension field will be calculated means W lambda F equal to D of cos psi plus C minus two S. Okay, this is the relation. For this relation. We are substitute all the value, d value, that uh, and psi value, and c value, okay, and s value. What we are getting is yes, that anchorage length. Okay, are substituting this four value in this relation, we get W lambda f is equal to two three eight three point nine. That is the W lambda f. This is the value. We are getting. Then coming to the psi value, psi value, how psi value will be calculated? This one point five tau h sine two psi. The psi value will be calculated by substituting this value. That is one point five into that is tau h is equal to one twenty. That is sine. Two times of forty point zero two, the z value is comes one seventy seven point two eight. Okay, for this using this z value, we are calculating yield strength of the tension plate. How the yield strength of tension plate will be calculated? F V in that F V is equal to F Y square minus three. Tau h square plus psi square of whole into point five minus z value. This is minus z value. In that z value, you substitute all the value f y tau h and z value here. Here z value we are getting f v is equal to forty seven. The yield strength of the tension period. Okay. 
you go for introduction part the diagram in the tension pair what is fv okay tension pair how that tension field will be acting and that we are go for fv is equal to 47 then coming to the vp that is pure shear uh, pure shear how to calculate pure shear means av fy divided by root 3 in that yeah, av is equal to av is equal to 420 into 66 that average area into that is 250 that is fy root of 3 gives this value in terms of kilo newton okay that is pure shear what is pure shear 4001 into 10 raised to 3 kilo newton then our interested to find out the nominal shear that should be lesser than or equal to vp then we can calculate v, v, vn value by substituting all the values known in that a v is equal to this value the tau b is equal to this value then lambda w f is equal to this value then t w is equal to this value then f v is equal to this value you substituting this but this values okay this psi value okay the smaller than or equal to vp check for this value or smaller than or equal to vp you substituting this value and getting this value that is 3731 smaller than or equal to vp that is pure shear okay hence this section is safe against the shear how this section is uh, safe against the shear means here nominal shear is smaller than the pure shear therefore the section is uh, safe against the shear this is the necessary check we are going to check then coming to the check for flange buckling in web this this check is necessary why because the the webs are weak in shear and buckling why because this is uh, this webs are acting as a studs and columns like that therefore webs is checked for a buckling in that buckling we assuming a stiffness spacing we are assuming first stiffness spacing that is a small a is greater than 1 point times of the d that is a is greater than 1.5 times of the d therefore what is the t is equal to e t is greater than or smaller uh, greater than or equal to d divided by 2 9 4 of fy divided by 250 all to the power of 1 by 2 in that consult small t is 1 4 0 0 then 2 9 4 that is the value we substitute p y that is uh, 2 1 7.4 that value will be obtained in previous slide you go through it and half is the whole rise to half that gives 4.4 mm okay the thickness is equal to 4.4 mm but we providing how much 4.4 is coming but we are providing 40 mm 14 mm therefore the web is adequate to avoid flange buckling into the flange buckling into the web this is how we are calculating the necessary check for buckling in a web section then coming for a check for moment carrying capacity of the flange how the carrying capacity of the flange will be comes this is the for plan section then the moment is assumed to be resisted by flanges alone the flanges flanges alone and the web resistance shear only the web resist shear only okay flange resistance moment and web resistance shear okay this combination gives a plate girder okay and that consult distance between the centroid of the flange we are calculating 
a distance between the centroid of the flange hs is equal to t plus t what is t that is 66 this is 1400 that is depth of the flange then that gives 1466 mm n af area of flange 420 into 66 gives 27720 mm square then mc moment carrying capacity of the this flange will be fy py into af into hs in that concern you substitute p value you substituting af you substituting ah a hs will be this value and a af is this value fy is the 217.4 will be there you substituting this value and multiplying each other we are getting 8834.5 kilo newton meter okay say this is 8825 kilo newton greater than this is maximum bending moment we are obtaining in first maximum bending moment okay this is more greater than this 8325 therefore hence the section is adequate for carrying moment and web is designed for a shear this session is safe for against the shear we can use this session section then coming to the web design the stiffness are spaced as shown in figure in next slide the spacing of stiffness is taken as how much that value already assume 1667 mm the spacing can be increased towards the center of the span and for economy that is increasing towards the center of the span for economy okay the end stiffener will be provided more and increasing the spacing at the center why because the critical or concentrated load at the support therefore we are spacing will be increasing at the center and stiffener spacing will be lesser in the support for economy then this this figure shows the spacing the 12 panel at 1667 mm that is uh, up to 20 meter or 20000 mm this is figures ab that is panel ab is the most critical panel that is maximum shear zone okay this is a uh, maximum shear zone what is why because this is under the support or support condition load will be acting this therefore this is the critical panel we can taken as this is a critical panel at the end then design check for the web are made for a panel a b this is panel a b only why because the critical will be at the support the shear resist the shear will be more at the support usually therefore we are designed only for a b panel that the critic uh, the check for checks will be do for only for a b panels this remaining b c and d uh, c d is safe once a b panel is safe therefore we check the necessity uh, check for a b only then coming to the end panel design how the end panel will be designed that is a b this figure shows the panel a b okay this is panel a b you take as one in that uh, end panel designing what is the d is equal to that is 4000 uh, 1400 mm t is equal to 14 mm in calculation for critical shear strength that is uh, QCR critical shear strength. This is the relation A by D. 
A is equal to how much? 1667 by 1400. That gives 1.19. Okay. D by T. That is 1400 divided by 14 gives 100. Okay. These are D by T and A by C. That is 1.19. Then coming to the elastic critical stress. That is Q C R. That is in shear strength, critical shear strength QCR, that is shear critical shear strength. When A by D is greater than 1, when A by D is greater than 1, equal to the relation of 1 plus 0 0.75 of T by D whole square of whole into that is 1000 divided by T by D of whole square. In that condition, we can get this value substituted 1.75, then A by D whole square is A by D whole square is 1.19 square, then 1000 divided by what is D by T? That value is 100, that is whole square. That is we are substituting this value and we are getting 123.57 Newton mm square. This is how the end panel AB is designed. Then coming to this slenderness parameter lambda w, that is lambda w is equal to that is 0.6 Fy by mu m all into QCR. That is QCR is equal to 1 by 2, that is all into 1 by 2, that is 0.5. Then you substituting Fy mu m and QR. This three values substituting this slenderness parameter relation. Okay, we are getting this is Fy is 250, 1.15, then QR, QCR is equal to 123.57, we are getting 1.02, that is 1.19 mm. Then N's critical standard strength, QCR is equal to 123.57 Newton per mm square. This is calculation of base shear strength, that is QB square, that is QB square is equal to, this is the relation we are used. In that QCR is substituting and A by D value is 1.1 is substituting. Okay. That gives 84.2. Then similarly YB is equal to PYW square minus Q 3QCR square plus psi T square all to the power of 0 0.5 minus psi T gives this relation. We are substituting all the values. Okay, we are getting 8.48. Okay, this is how the checks, necessary checks are do in for a end panels, for a stiffener panels. We are continuing the next class, how the upcoming design will be checked. Necessary check will be checked. Thank you.